Okay. This video is long overdue. <laughs> talk to you about um, my spinal fusion um, my spinal fusion um, surgery and kind of my experiences and recovering and what happened afterwards because girl it's been a journey um, and hopefully this will help someone who is going to go through that um, and I think just kind of talking about it will help me um, so, right around this time of year, in May um, 2017, May, like, June-ish, um, I was having a lot of trouble breathing, and I had a history of asthma, and I was like, oh, my asthma's just getting worse, um, and for those of you who don't know, I'm a synchronized swimmer, so that it was, like, kind of concerning, like, I should get that checked up on if I'm having bad asthma. So my mom took me to a pulmonologist and um, if, if you don't know what a pulmonologist is, it's basically a doctor who covers all of the respiratory system um, and deals a lot with asthma. So I went there and she was like, I think you definitely have asthma, your um, flow test was low, here's the medicines that you can take, but we want to... Um, just like in case get uh, an x-ray just to make sure there's nothing like structurally wrong so they ordered a chest x-ray I got a chest x-ray and a few days later they called me and they were like just so you know um well they called my mom they were like just so you know your daughter has pretty severe scoliosis and if you don't know what scoliosis is that is um basically a curvature of the spine it can curve forward or it can curve in my case an s curve it kind of looks like an s on the x-ray um so they sent that to us and we were like wow like that's a pretty severe curve and so um they recommended we go see my um, pediatric doctor and so immediately um we i went and saw my doctor and he said that it was probably not as severe as we were thinking and it was the angle of an x-ray it wasn't a specific s x-ray for um spines it was for the chest so that would like relieved us and we were kind of like oh wow like it's not as bad as it seems then he also said that we should definitely go to a specialist or a surgeon that specializes in um, scoliosis just to be sure um, even though he thought that it wasn't as severe so we went around like early July um, and his name was Dr. Shindell he's located in Phoenix Arizona um, and he immediately took specialized x-rays of the spine and he told me that it was definitely more severe than we thought it was. And um, it went from about 37 from the first x-ray, 37 degrees, to um, 49 degrees. So that's a pretty significant increase. Um, so it was definitely more severe than we thought. But I was, I will say there are so many people who have scoliosis way worse that have like 70 degrees 80 degrees um and my heart goes out to them and i was definitely lucky with being right on the bridge of having surgery but he did um uh definitely recommend immediately recommend surgery which was very shocking because we didn't like even think about that um and immediately he recommended surgery um so after that, I went home and we were talking about it, told my dad, because my mom was with me at the appointment, and my dad was like, you need to do it right away, like, you need to get your surgery done right away. It was, like, mid-July-ish, early July, and I had a vacation planned, like, going to the beach, which I was going to the beach with these amazing people, and, um, 
and I was like no like I have this planned and I kind of don't want to miss the start of the school year um because I was going into eighth grade and I was like I don't want to miss the start of that I want to meet my teachers get my schoolwork um all sorted out and everything before I have surgery so eventually um after the initial shock and like being like we need to have surgery right now um we decided on mid-September so my surgery date was decided on September 14th of 2017. So a few weeks after that, um, probably like early August, I think it was definitely like near the school year, I had a hospital tour, which is awesome. I definitely recommend it if you are going to have surgery or to have spinal fusion, go see what it's about. Um, they show you the rooms that you're going to stay in, the rooms that you're going to um, get kind of uh, started in uh, the IV. Now that I have, um, it's been two years since surgery, um, I actually give tours at um, Phoenix Children's Hospital, which is where I got it done, um, and that's an amazing program. I definitely, definitely recommend that if you are going to have spinal fusion surgery. Um, it really just makes you feel a lot more prepared. So I got that done. And then basically after that, I focused on school a lot. If you know me, I um, focus on school way too much. Um, but I really wanted to meet my teachers, to meet everyone, and to be solid when I leave, when I left for surgery. Um, so I met all of them. I created a plan and then tried to get projects done really fast that I knew were going to be due after surgery which I so doing that I like never kind of thought about surgery and like what what it was going to be like and I never took a second to think about it and then the night before I was I like was with my mom my dad was working and um I I remember like we just binge watched Atypical it was a really good show you haven't seen it um, and I took a shower and braided my hair another thing that I recommend um, take a really long shower braid your hair because you won't get to take a shower for a while and your hair might get a little gross um, so I did that and then I like kind of just was in my room and I just like started crying and I was like realized that I was scared like I was scared for surgery and I hadn't talked about it like I had been like trying I was just trying to be like super brave and like it didn't phase me like I was trying to be the tough kid and so then I like hadn't talked about how scared I was to people which communication and stuff like this is super important um try to talk to people about what you're going through um, and so then, like, I left the next morning with my dad and my mom. My dad drove, um, to the hospital, um, around, I feel like I woke up at, like, 4.30 in the morning. We got there super, super early. And we, um, checked in. We went and got in the room. We were called very early, um, very quickly. It all happened super, super quickly. And, um they were putting my IV in and the nurse that I had was they have this like really cool numbing thing now uh, and it's like I forget what it's called it's like a pressure thing and it's super cool and use it lots of times it's really cool um, but the nurse that I had like it didn't work and she was putting it in and it hurt like really bad and I was like screaming and I really wasn't screaming because of like the pain just in that moment I was like bawling and screaming and like having a, <laughs> like a total panic attack because I hadn't talked about it and I was so scared and um, then they sedated me um, and so I don't remember the first um, the 30 minutes like before surgery 
um, and like being wheeled off to the operating room I don't remember any of that which I find kind of nice because like I don't have to think about like being incredibly scared um but my mom said like I was just talking about how tired I was and how I just wanted to go to bed um, which is pretty normal so I was in surgery I was in surgery for only like three hours and originally the surgery is can be like four to six hours but I was only in there for like really quickly and if you don't know what the surgery is they basically take um, they basically take screws they take two screws per vertical vertical vertebrae sorry um, and they attach two screws um, on each vertebrae and then from those screws they attach two metal bars to the screws and with a wrench tighten it kind of gruesome but um, it straightens out your spine and eventually your spine fuses and it's a really cool surgery I'll link my Instagram below on my Instagram I have a highlight called um, scoliosis month from last June because it is scoliosis awareness month um, and in it I kind of have like a video and um, like an animation that shows what it is so if you're interested in seeing that you can also find it on YouTube it's pretty cool um, but so went into surgery it only took three hours my parents came and I don't really remember it was actually the day that Selena Gomez had surgery as well had I think she had like a liver transplant I don't know um, and that was like the day I, and my mom said like she told me that right after I got out of surgery I don't remember that so and my aunt came to visit me right after surgery and that's the other thing I had lots and lots of visitors and if you came to visit me I love you um, thank you we made the recovery so much easier um, I remember my mom telling me that the nurses said that like my hospital room was like a revolving door and I am so lucky that I had the support that I do because a lot of people don't have that and um, I hope by making this video I can help support people who don't have that um, you're not alone um, but I had a lot of support and thank you um, so then um, the recovery I immediately was I was put in my hospital room and the hardest part I always did the hardest part of surgery is the fact that I did not drink water for like 36 hours and I was told that I could not drink water <laughs> by my surgeon um, and because it would make me sick and eventually I did end up getting sick um, but I was just like really thirsty and I did have like I did have liquid coming from my IV but I didn't like drink water it's like different um but it basically felt like I was a human Barbie doll and it was just uncomfortable through it was it was painful but the biggest part was just like it was uncomfortable um, you couldn't really move your back move your spine twist um, it was just like perfectly straight and you're really really have a really really good posture because you can't slouch and you can't move your spine right after because your spine hasn't fused yet I walked I want to say the day of and if not the day of the day after because they try to get you up and walking as soon as possible and um, I walked like by the time I was out of the hospital I was walking laps around the, the um, hospital wing um, which is super cool like 30 years ago you would be like on a board for six months but nowadays you're walking like literally the next day it's insane it's really cool my recovery was really fast 
and a lot easier than some people's, which I feel very lucky for. Um, I think part of that was because I am very athletic, I was very athletic, um, and that helped a lot. Um, so there, it was hard. I had a catheter in and eventually I like was forced to go to the bathroom. I was forced to get up, go sit in a chair. And basically every time I got up, this is kind of TMI, but basically every time I got up, I would, um, vomit, which is like, if you can't even imagine like not being able to curve your spine and vomit at the same time like it's like <laughs> but um, that was like kind of the worst part but I had a lot of visitors but I was just like sleeping a lot of the time it was very dark in my room so now when I look back on surgery it's a very dark memory and I think that if we had opened a window or turned on more lights it would I would have it would have been better so that's something if you're going to have surgery they tell you that you're very sensitive to light after surgery which is true from the anesthesia but um I think I would have been able to handle the light um what things did I do? I didn't really do much. Like, honestly, I was just, like, sleeping, and then, like, I had a visitor, and then I would sleep, and then someone would come and visit me. So, yeah, and my friends would come. They, my friends, like, um, I had a walker for two weeks afterwards, and they decorated my walker, um, which is pretty cool. Love you guys. Um, and that was awesome. And then, five days later, I left the hospital and went home and here's where it got harder <laughs> um it, I was just more uncomfortable at home um because it was harder for my parents to know exactly what to do um but they tried their best and um I wanted to stop taking opioids as soon as possible I was taking oxycodone um, which can be a very dangerous and addictive drug so me being young I wanted to stop taking that as soon as possible okay so about three days into being home um, I stopped taking the oxycodone um, and also one of the main reasons is because you can get very constipated on um, Oxy, um, which I could already feel happening. Like, I had not pooped for, like, a week. Um, and so I got off of it and was taking, like, Advil and, like, kind of less, like, over-the-counter stuff. Um, and... Then I was basically just watching movies, doing everything that I could. Um, into my, a little further into my recovery at home, my parents would come and take me out to lunch and kind of force me to go out to lunch. The main thing at that point is that you're just really tired and you get really worn out very easily, very quickly. Um, but... I think it was Friday night, it was like, okay, so Thursday night into my recovery, I got home Monday, so Thursday night, I, um, I watched a movie with my mom, because my mom was the only one home, because my dad was working nights, so I started watching, like, a movie with my mom, and we watched Dirty Dancing, which is my favorite movie of all time. And I'd never seen it, and this, that was the first time I watched it. And I watched it seven times between then and Sunday. Like, seven times. And Friday night, I had watched it, like, four times. And I was in tears, like, on the ground, like, going stir-crazy. Because... 
because I'm the type of person who like cannot be bored and who needs to be like doing stuff being with people and by the time I got home I didn't really have visitors so I had lots and lots of visitors in the hospital but I didn't really have visitors at home like my family would come but yeah and that was hard and I was going stir crazy and I also Friday night felt very sick and I couldn't sleep and I was just feeling really really sick so I was taken to the ER which a lot of people don't know and I've spoken a lot about my surgery but a lot of people don't really know that I was taken back to the ER um, about a week after coming home and basically they attributed a lot of my sickness to constipation and being on oxycodone and I got an enema at the hospital it didn't do a lot <laughs> but um, I felt a little bit better after being there um, mostly I was just stir crazy um, and I wanted to be going back to school as soon as possible so I took another week and the biggest thing I did in the next week was go to Cafe Rio with my mom um, and she like took me to her office she did some work we went to Cafe Rio and I think we went like shopping and I was like begging her to take me home I was like I cannot be out any longer I'm so tired take me home please 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 and she was like no you need to be out you need to be doing stuff I was like no I'm so tired but it helped me in the long run <laughs> going out um, and then I went back to school for like well I got an email from my teacher and she told me I have a spot open in the advanced class in the algebra one class um, if you would like it and I was like of course I was doing all my work from home at this point and I would do like three to four hours of school work a day and then be done um, and I was like I really want that advanced placement spot and um, sorry not AP but just the advanced class um, and so I realized that like I kind of need to be in class and I need to be doing that so I went to like one to two periods that's what I started off with the week and that was three weeks after being discharged from the hospital and the week after that was fall break so I took that that week really recovered um, and then went back to school full-time the week after and I think I did some half days I could not carry a backpack I would leave it in one of my teachers classrooms and take the stuff that I needed or I would have a friend carry it for me um, but most of the time I just carried like a few books that I needed um, and I always carried a pillow I had like a, an elephant pillow pet I had like um, an Eeyore pillow pet from Disneyland um, and I always had it like on the back of my chair for like weeks and then at that point I was going back to school I was hanging out with my friends I was doing better so again I am the synchronized swimmer um, and synchronized swimming is a really very difficult sport um, you have to have a huge commitment to it and it's physically really difficult on your body um, and I was like I want to go see them um, at this point it was like late October I had a lot of friends I was like talking to a guy um, it was a, I felt really good it was a good point in my life um, and I said like I had told my coaches and everyone before I left for surgery that I would be back around January ish I ended up coming back late October I want to say like early November and I came back and I coached for a few weeks and I really loved coaching like I feel like I was really good at it 
um, and it was really fun for me. Um, but eventually I was like, I need to be back in the water. I'm feeling good and I want to get back. Um, like a week before I got back in the water, one of this, one of a girl who I knew, um, uh, who had quit, um, months before had come back and she started swimming with my team again. And, um, if you don't know, synchronized swimming, a full team is eight people. So with her swimming, they had eight people. And so I was just on land kind of talking with them and they were going through kind of their patterns and drilling and um, something called land drilling, which is basically like doing the moves on land. And I was like, so where am I in the pattern? Like, where am I in the routine? And a lot of my friends were like, yeah, where's Maisie? Like, where, where should she go? Like, where's that pattern? And my coach pulled me aside and told me that she thought that it was a good thing for me to not swim this year and to take a break and recover. And I knew that it was really mostly just because of they ha already had eight swimmers and they didn't have room for another one. They didn't have room for me. And that like broke my heart. And I like went to the locker room and was crying and could not believe that th this would, that would have been my sixth year swimming. And I was like, I need to swim. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to do and eventually I was like okay I will be their alternate I'll be their alternate swimmer I still need to kind of learn how to swim um, with my whole body being completely different because my body had shifted and kind of twisted back into place and it felt different and so I got in the water I immediately like started freestyling and I was like no 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 <laughs> I cannot do that and I like came back to the wall and I was like uh but um about a week into the water like I was good I was doing so much better than anyone thought I would do and about a month into it I knew the routine and I felt like I was just as good as a swimmer as the girl who had taken my spot and that year was really hard and I get very depressed in the sum in the winter sorry um because of light changes and whatever and not being able to swim and just really trying and pushing my body to go the hardest that it could so that I could catch up with everyone and kind of be considered to be back on the team again and that was really hard on me and several times throughout the next month throughout the next months like the spring months I was told like you might go in be prepared to go in um and um long story short summer came along and the girl who had took my spot ended up quitting the team again and not going to Oxford, Ohio, which is where we had our big nationals junior Olympics. And I ended up going with them for a whole combo thing. And I was really grateful to be able to do that and to be able to kind of be with the team again. And that's where it kind of my mental health got worse around the time of um, like early June and May, which is when I first figured out that I had scoliosis. But so that is kind of my full like one year journey of scoliosis and spinal fusion. And it's really hard for me to look back 
Um, so in wrapping up this video, I'd like to say that actually two years before I was diagnosed with scoliosis, I was told that I may have a curvature in my spine. And I was never checked up on it. Um, nothing was ever done about it. And this whole, this whole story could have been avoided if um, people were more aware of scoliosis and its issues and how fast it can increase. Um, so yeah. Um, but if you are going to have surgery, if you have had surgery, um, specifically spinal fusion surgery, um, I wish you all the luck um, in the world. Know that there are so many people that stand by you, that are with you. Um, my heart goes out to you. I'm here. You can comment. Um, DM me on Instagram. Um, if you have scoliosis, if you wear a back brace, um, my heart goes out to you too. If you don't wear a back brace and you still have scoliosis, I'm here for you. Um, DM me, comment me, tell me um, your story um, and how you got through it. Uh, and look out for two more videos that I kind of want to do about medical PTSD um, and kind of how my mental health deteriorated a year after surgery because that is not discussed and that is super big part of my life um, living with medical PTSD um, and also kind of the different health problems that I have going on now because if you know me I have a multitude of other health problems that I've been dealing with and kind of what the future needs for me and um, and thank you so much for listening to this and just thank you thank you thank you I love you like it like my video if you like the video um, and look out for those those two new videos